Hey guys, Jared here, Magnetic Men's Club. I hope you have an amazing day. Today we're gonna to talk about your ego, your self-esteem, how they both intertwine with one another, and some steps that you can do to keep your ego in check and also cultivate a healthy self-esteem because if you have a healthy self-esteem, generally speaking, you have a healthy ego. If you have a low self-esteem, you generally have a low ego, you generally have a low sense of I or sense of self. The reason why this is important is, especially for men, is, and maybe you've experienced this, maybe you've witnessed this, maybe this is you, a lot of men have a false sense of ego. Their ego is either very high, meaning they have a false sense of self of who they are, and so they inflate. Maybe they drive a car they can't afford. Maybe they wear flashy clothes to make them appear to be bigger than they are. Maybe they, quite frankly, lie a lot about how much money they make. Anytime you hear somebody say, I, or there's a statement with an I in front of it, that is the ego talking. And then you also might have met somebody who has a very low sense of self. They feel down, they feel low. They don't feel very energetic. They don't have a lot of passions. They don't really have a lot of purpose. Well, this is now their self-esteem. Their internal dialogue, their internal language, isn't mapping to their ideal self or their actual identity. And so these two these two things, your ego and your self-esteem, almost work together. Now, before we get into that, I guess we first need to understand what ego is. I touched upon it a little bit, but that's just, think about it as your sense of how self-important you are. It kind of, it refers to your individual perception of your own worth and your abilities. Not what other people think of you, what you think of you. And ego is very important because it is a comparison model. That's all ego does. It's designed to be a comparison model. So for instance, you can't say you're tall unless you're next to somebody who's short. That's the ego, it's comparison. I'm taller than this person. Or the shorter person can say, I'm shorter than this tall person. That person is also making a comparison. And that's what your ego does virtually all day. It just compares. And somebody who has a very high sense of self, almost an inflated sense of self, has a very high comparison model. All they do all day is compare. Maybe you've heard this before where you talk to a guy, he goes, is he better looking than me? Maybe girls back me up here. Maybe you're dating a guy or and he finds out who your ex is and your ex is really good looking, he's 6'4", and now your new boyfriend has a temper tantrum. Does he have a bigger dick than me? Does he make more money than me? That's his ego. He's comparing now this past boyfriend that he just saw a picture of, comparing himself to him. Women, you guys do the same thing. You might see his ex-girlfriend who's really pretty. She might be completely different than you. Maybe you have blonde hair, she has brunette hair. Maybe you're a little short, she's tall. Who knows? You're doing the same thing as well. Your ego is getting in the way and it's comparing her to you. So we all have to a degree this comparison model called the ego. Self-esteem is that internal evaluation of our self-worth and our value. It's not what we think of ourselves. it's actually the programming where it's comparing the eternal, or it's comparing through eternal evaluation your self-worth or your value. And it goes into saying that someone with high self-esteem generally feels good about themselves, right? I mean, that's pretty obvious, and somebody with low self-esteem probably doesn't feel good about themselves or feels really amazing about a situation. And so this is how the ego and the self-esteem are kind of intertwined. And having a healthy balance between the ego and the self-esteem 
is obviously important for just general well-being. Somebody who's very happy, very grounded in their energy, and talking more specifically for men, women follow along, but we're talking about grounded, masculine energy. Somebody who knows where they're going, who has a path, who has a purpose, who has a plan to get there, who is making those steps to get there. This is what we call on their way to being high value. Maybe they work out a lot, maybe they eat well. They have a plan, they have a purpose for their life. They see themselves, their ideal self, or their ideal version of themselves, and they're going that way, meaning their actions are leading them to the type of man or woman they want to be. If their actions are leading towards the person or their identity or the person they want to be, then they have high self-esteem. They feel good about themselves because their internal language is being congruent with who they are. Now let's look at somebody with low self-esteem. Low self-esteem, again, they might have an identity of who they would like to be or who they think they are. They might think they're a high-value man. They might think they take good care of themselves, that they eat well, that they go to the gym, that they are doing everything they can to make the kind of money they want. But let's look at this person's actions. They're going the opposite way. They're saying they go to the gym, but when they go to the gym, they're there for about 10 minutes and they kind of finger fuck the weights and then they leave. They say they eat well, but they go to the bar, chug down some beer, eat some chicken wings, and their body composition doesn't really change. They have a pretty decent job, but they're really not doing anything to show their boss or a side hustle that they want more out of life their actions are going the opposite way. So what's happening? This person's starting to feel bad about themselves. And here's why. Their actions are leading them away to what their ideal self is or what their identity of themselves is. And because they have an ego, which we all do, they're seeing all of these other guys, maybe in their job, maybe in the gym, maybe their friends who are dating beautiful women, they're also now comparing their life to his current situation and nothing is mapping out. So he has a low self-esteem, low self-worth. And this is what I see a lot of men doing. And so this becomes a problem, right? Because we all want to have healthy self-esteem. We want to all have a high self-esteem about ourselves. We want to have healthy ego because when we do compare ourselves and we are for all intents and purposes within our competitive range, meaning a 35-year-old white man in, in comparison to his peers, is he above his peers at his peers level or below? Women, same thing, 35-year-old woman. Are you with your peers? Are you above your peers? Or are you below your peers? Again, ego. And so when you're making these comparisons and you're realizing you're below your peers because the actions you're doing are moving you away from what they might be doing, you have low self-esteem. So maybe you're in this camp right now. Maybe this is happening to you. What I invite you to do is two things. Number one, I would love for you to do in the links below, there's two tests I'd like you to take. They're 100% free. Number one, I want you to take the wheel of life. Now the wheel of life, it's self-explanatory in the test, but it gives you a baseline of where you're at in all dimensions of your life, in your health, personal life, romantic, friends, business, all this. Again, it's 100% free. I want you to take that. And I want you to see, because a lot of people don't self-audit, and I want you to self-audit yourself, because you're gonna be answering these questions. You really can't cheat. You can lie to yourself, but what's the point of that? I want you to see where you're having a deficit in your life. 
And then I want you to really ask yourself, does my ideal self map with this reality? In this same test, if you want to jump on a free discovery call with me, all you have to do is after the test, click another link, get into my calendar, and we can talk about this one-on-one. -on -one. The other test I would like you guys to take is your core values. It's, I believe it's 16 questions. I might have added a few more, but it's gonna spit out the top five core values. And why this is important, I've done videos on this, but why you need to know what your top five core values are because this maps perfectly with your ideal self or your identity. And when you do this, your ego sort of gets in check because you're doing, or I hope you're doing the steps needed to move action-based your decisions moving forward onto who you really are. And when you're doing that, your self-esteem goes up and your ego, based on the comparison model, isn't overly stimulated. It's still gonna compare. It's still gonna say, hey, are you doing better than your peers? Are you doing better than this guy? Are you doing worse than this guy? And if it's a healthy ego, that's a healthy way. So, you know, I can pick up the pace a little bit. And so it's very important to understand how your self-esteem and your ego are basically tied together. And you really can't have one really high without the other one really low or the other one really low without the other one really high. They sort of kind of almost work in opposites of each other. So, for instance, again, if you have a very low self-esteem, you could be posing as somebody who has very high ego. Again, think about your friends, maybe this is you, maybe a guy that you know, that drives a vehicle he can't afford, flashes money, just talks a big game. He has a very high self-inflated version of himself. He probably has very low self-esteem. And here's a quick way to tell that. If you start poking holes at them and you start making fun of them and he gets pissed, very low self-esteem. So they kind of work in the inverse. It's really important to understand this, especially as, as a man, because we are competitive creatures. Women are too, but we're talking about specifically men in the dating world, men in business, in going to the gym. We're all very competitive, so we all do have our egos um, that are always comparing ourselves to other peers. And having that healthy ego actually is a good thing because it keeps us competitive, it keeps us edgy, and it also helps us move our goals, helps us move the needle forward to the best version of ourselves. My name is Jared Schoomaker. I hope this video made sense for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them. Drop me a comment. Hit the like button if you like videos like this, and of course that bell icon so you know when new videos are being dropped. With that, have an amazing day, and we will talk soon. Bye.